In the previous part of this tutorial series, we had created balloons and bullets. And so the balloons rose up randomly at different uh, velocities and we could pop them by drawing back on the bullets, sort of Angry bird style applying force and then uh, popping the balloons as they went up. And the balloons are then being affected by these uh, thresholds and their point values are going up. So now we need to implement some sort of system of scoring and um, a way to prompt the player to play again if they win or lose, and as well to do some um, memory cleanup when all of the balloons are gone and all of the bullets are gone. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so we have our bullet.lua file that is acting as the class for our bullets, and we've implemented um, the touch property or the um, touch method here, which is essentially drawing a line and adding force to the bullet. And then we've got the collision detection, which is registering when the bullet hits a balloon or a wall. We'll head back to our game.lua file. And here we'll create a method uh, that will essentially allow us to start the game. And if the level is over, we can restart the game easily. So underneath of the spawn bullets and spawn balloons method in game.lua. We're going to delete the spawn bullets and spawn balloons call and create a new method called start game. Function start game. And we're going to feed an object params into this particular method. End. Okay, so we're going to call spawn bullets and spawn balloon inside of this method. And we will call the argument uh, params.bullets and params.balloons. Okay. And also what we need to do is we need to initialize our variables uh, with each start game. So we're going to create another method just above it called init vars. Init vars. Okay. So let's create the init vars method. Function init vars. And here we'll also feed params. And let's create a variable called underscore total underscore bullets equal to params dot uh, bullets underscore total balloons equals params dot balloons. And then let's go ahead and create underscore score equals params Dot score. We haven't dealt with scoring yet, but certainly we'll get to that within this particular tutorial. Save that. And so now looks like we are good to go. We have start game and init vars. If we wanted to call start game, uh, we could simply go under start game under the declaration and call start game. Then Open and close your curly braces, bullets equals then total bullets and balloons equals underscore total balloons comma score equals zero. We haven't done anything again with the score. Okay, so let's add some comments. All right, so let's save it. And these underscore variables here should be initialized at the top of the script also. So under set up some vars, local total bullets equals five, local total balloons. Let's do 10 balloons. And we've already initialized the underscore score variable. Save that. 
and look at it in the simulator. Uh, we've got an error. Let's check it out. Um, try that again. Oh, local params, a nil value, 181. Ah, yes, because I did not feed in init vars. Tell you what, since we're actually feeding the vars directly into start game, we'll comment that out. We're going to use this init vars later. Okay. So there's our bullet, and the balloons slowly rise. There's one bullet, two bullets, three bullets, four bullets, five bullets, and we're done. So now it's time to implement some logic. And to do that, we're going to create a state machine. We haven't done this in any tutorial so far, um, but this is my preferred method of keeping track of where we're at within the game, within the logic of any particular game. So let's head to the top of the script, and underneath the setup some vars, we're going to create local state equals display dot new group. But we're not actually going to place anything in this group. Um, we're going to be launching custom events, and you need to have a display object to register those events. So uh, we can use either a new display object or a group. So we're creating a group here just for the convenience of being able to um, launch uh, events against it or events with it. So let me copy and paste some comments. Okay. Now the uh, two classes will also need to know about the state machine, um, which will be sure in our code to create references to both the bullet class and the balloon class for the state machine. But first, let's actually um, create a listener for the state machine at the bottom of the code. Okay, so just above initialize variables, we're going to create a listener for state changes. Okay, so state add event listener, just like you would any other event. We'll listen for the change event. Now this is, an, a, this is a custom event. I could call this anything I wanted. I'm choosing to call it change. And we'll have the object handle its own methods. So just above it, we are going to create the state machine. Okay, so now function state change. Okay, so colon change would refer to what you're listening for. Then the E represents, of course, the event. And this particular block of code is going to get pretty large. Um, so we need to think about the types of events that we would be firing in our um, code. For instance, when we fire a bullet, we might launch a fire event. When we strike a balloon, um, we might launch some sort of scoring event. Uh, so we're going to now go to different parts of the code and implement um, dispatches of events from uh, the different classes to the game.lua. So game.lua is acting as a hub for all state machine events. We'll connect the state machine to our classes by inserting some code above the state machine change function. And here we're passing the state machine to the bullet class and to the balloon class by passing it to the state property of those classes. Now we haven't created that property yet, but I went ahead and went to the files bullet.lua and at the top created a property called state and did the same for the balloon.lua file here at the top passing state. And let me correct my spelling. There we go. Okay, so now the first implementation of the state machine will be to um, dispatch an event upon collision with a balloon. And so we actually got a sneak preview of this in the previous tutorial during a copy and paste, but now we'll properly in implement it. Okay, so we'll head to the collision portion of the bullet class. And here there is custom event dispatching, and I've already created two variables, uh, one to represent the score and one to represent the multiplier of the balloon. Remember that here at the beginning phase of the collision, if the bullet collides with the balloon, grab the dot points property of the balloon, which is represented by E dot other, and the dot multiplier property of the balloon. All right, so to dispatch the event, we'll type state 
colon dispatch event open and close your parentheses now open and close curly brace name of the event so we're going to dispatch it to the change event and then now the rest of this will be custom uh, properties so the state is equal to score points equal to s which we declared above and multiplier equal to m okay now, because we pass the reference here at the top of the class, we'll be able to register um, or dispatch this event to game.lua. So we'll save it and head to game.lua. And we need to now, within the state change function, uh, write some code that will listen for the, um, the score state. So now, if e.state equals score, then and end. So now we can implement implement some sort of scoring system when the balloon collides with the uh, or the bullet collides with the balloon. I've got some code already written. Copy it and paste it and review. So we'll update the score only when a balloon is popped by a bullet, not by the wall. And so we're only sending the e dot points and dot uh, multiplier property of the collision um, when the bullet collides with the balloon. So you'll see here in the bullet class, it's only when it collides with the balloon that we actually have these um, properties present. So we create this logic that so long as the multiplier isn't equal to zero, then we'll update the uh, underscore score variable, which is keeping track of the score. So we'll take the current score and add on to it the number of points times the multiplier. And then we'll call this update score method, which we'll create here in a moment, which will take the score object and update it with this text. So let me copy and paste that. And above the state machine, I paste this update score method. And the reason I create this update score method is because uh, when you update numbers um, or text objects, they, their alignment can change and you often have to reposition them. So I just create a, a really quick and dirty way to feed an object that will accept the, um, the change to its dot text property and then set its reference point and its X all in one foul swoop. So now I, f I am feeding the score to the score object and using the underscore score value. So let's test this out in the simulator and refresh it and press play. Okay, so now as we launch bullets at the balloons, we can see the score increments. So if I hit a balloon in the five, it should be worth five points and I'll try to hit one in the 10. Each balloon will be worth 10 points. Awesome. So it's, we're now at the point where we can think about implementing some win-loss conditions. And we'll do that also within the state machine. And so we need, to, we need to think about under what conditions would we have a win or a loss. Uh, ideally, we probably would reach some sort of maximum uh, total points scored. But we would reach that before uh, we ran out of bullets or we ran out of balloons. So let's implement a variable to keep track or a variable that is the um, total score that is to be achieved. And as well, we'll need a method for keeping track of how many balloons and bullets we have. So we'll go to the top of the script and implement a win threshold, underscore win threshold. So this is the total number of points for a win. Let's say 30. And then we'll go back to our state machine and we'll implement some scoring um, or some other states to check in order to see if we won or not. Since ultimately a uh, win or loss is determined by score, within the score state, we should probably implement a, some sort of logical check for the scoring. I've got some code and I'll copy and paste it right underneath the um, updating of score. Let's review it. Did the player win? So if they've run out of balloons to pop or bullets to fire, let's check their score one last time. 
So we're going to implement a way to check the bullets here and the balloons in a minute. But basically, if they run out of bullets or balloons, then we check the score. If the score is less than or equal to the threshold, then they've won. And so we'll create this um, portion of the state machine in a minute. Otherwise, they have lost. If, there are, if they still have balloons and bullets left, then we need to let them keep playing. And then here, if the score, current score is um, greater than or equal to the win threshold, then we will dispatch a win. And I should have said greater than or equal to up here. Okay, so we need to create the state win loss and then as well the values win or loss. But also we need to implement a way to keep track of the bullets and the balloons. And so the way that we'll do that is we'll implement um, a portion of the state machine that will uh, decrement the total bullets and total balloons um, for each balloon that's popped or bullet that is fired. So I'll bring over the balloon.lua class and in its pop method, I will copy and paste some code. Okay, in this code, we're telling the state machine that a pop has happened. So we dispatch to state the event change and the state pop. Let's quickly do the same thing with the uh, bullet class, but we will dispatch the event called fire. And this will require a little more finesse because we want the fire event to have a little bit of delay so that way a bullet has an opportunity to hit a balloon um, before it has dispatched the fire because this can create some weird order problems uh, when we're checking for win-loss conditions. So within the touch function of the bullet um, class, we're going to implement here under the ended or canceled the following code. So underneath launch the bullet, we want to wait a second to give the bullet time to hit something, then register a fire with the state machine. So self.timer, we're creating a new timer on the bullet. A second later, we're going to fire the following function, which is to dispatch an event, that's the change event with the state fire, and then immediately cancel the timer, and we'll only dispatch it once. So now we'll head back to game.lua and go to our state machine and implement the fire and pop states. So here we have if E state equals score, let's go to the end portion and I'll paste some new code. So now we have three different states, E dot state equals score, else if E dot state equals pop, else if E dot state equals fire. So notice that I changed the end to an else if. Now if it's the pop state, then every time a balloon pops, we're gonna decrement the total. So underscore total balloons equals underscore total balloons minus one. And then all of the balloons have been popped. Check the scoring. So if the um, total balloons equals zero, then we're going to dispatch the event score. So then that'll move us up to this branch of the state machine score that we just wrote. Same thing with fire. Uh, the total bullets will decrement for each bullet fired. And then after all the bullets have been fired, then we will check the score and we're sending um, points and multiplier of zero because notice that within the score branch of the state machine it is if the multiplier doesn't equal zero that we're incrementing the score so we're forcing the state machine to um, at this point there's no more balloons go back up to the score and then check for win loss and that's the next portion of the state machine that we need to implement so above the pop state portion of the state machine, I'll paste some new code, else if e dot state double equals win loss. So this is called um, after the scoring has been calculated, then um, regardless of win or loss, it will dispatch an event to the state machine, um, win loss, and then with a value of win or loss. So here in win loss, uh, it's possible that the player could win while balloons are still spawning. So we need to um, see if the timer variable exists in the uh, spawn balloon. So that's up here. Um, it was created. And then we need to cancel it if it does exist and nil it out. And as well, um, during win-loss, we don't want the player to be able to fire any bullets. 
So we need to create a custom um, dot ready variable uh, to implement in the bullet class. So we'll head to the bullet class and at the top of the file of the class we will insert the following code ready equals false. We're exposing a property of the bullet class um, and essentially we're passing this reference from the game.lua to bullet class and we'll head to the bullet touch function. We're going to fold this entire function block here and add this simple code. If ready, then we can do all of the touch handling and end. There is no else. It's just if it's ready, it can handle touches. If not, it can't. Okay, and so we indent that to the right. Let's save it. Okay, and we need to actually implement this in the start game of the game.lua. So we'll head down to the start game method and type bullet.ready equals true. And also head to win loss. And underneath where we canceled the um, balloon timer, we will type bullet.ready equals false. Okay, so let's test it out and see where we're at. Press play. Okay, so balloons will be uh, flying upwards and I can uh, affect the, bu the bullets. So now I implemented a win condition where I just really have to score one point to win. So you can see no more balloons are um, floating upwards and as well, I can no longer touch the bullet um, and so the ready has been set to false. So that's working. And the uh, win threshold here was actually it was set to 10. So I just had to score 10 points to win. And we'll change that later. As a final touch to our game, we're going to implement a marquee that will appear and display the text you win or you lose, uh, depending on if the player meets the win threshold or not. And so I've got a large block of code that I'll copy and paste here just before the thresholds at line 97 and I'll step through it. So what we're doing is we're creating a group called marquee and we're setting that to um, a visible of false and an alpha of zero so it's hidden. And then within that group we have the following elements. We have a background rounded rec, rect, we have a um, marquee you win text, which is essentially displaying you win or you lose. We'll see that in a minute. And as well, a text a field that says play again. And there are a few methods that are created on the marquee group. So one is a method to show the group, which will accept a value of win or loss, and then write either you win or you lose. And so, It'll write the value, it'll show itself, and it does this animation uh, to fade in from alpha zero to one. Then there's the hide method, which essentially the marquee will, um, will transition from alpha of uh, one to zero, and it will then at the end of that dispatch the event new in order to start a new level, which will create within the state machine. Uh, there are some other um, convenience methods, such as uh, the marquee you win uh, write, which similar to the update score, will take text. It'll um, set it to the property of marquee you win, the uh, text property, and then set the center reference point, which you have to do with uh, new text. And then finally, we register a touch listener for the marquee group. And so what's happening is at the end of a touch phase, we are calling the hide event or the hide method of the marquee group, which is up here. Okay, let's save it and test it to see what we have so far. And actually, you know what? Before we do that, we need to actually call um, marquee hide under win loss or, or marquee show. So under win loss, marquee show. We want to show the marquee and we want to feed. Um, the value, e dot value, and that is sent here when the um, win loss state is sent, it has this value of win or loss. And so we're going to feed that into the show method of marquee. Okay, so relaunch. 
Um, I think we only need a point to win. It might be 10. Uh, looks like we need 10 points. So we'll try to play a little bit better. We go for multiples and... Okay, so it fades in, you win. And right now, I don't have the state for um, when we want to create a new game. Let's create that. That's the final state of this particular game. Okay, I've got the code on the clipboard ready to paste. And above when lost, I will paste this code block, else if e.state equals new. And so you might remember earlier um, in the series, we had marked the bullets and the balloons for removal using this dot remove property. So now we're finally going to implement code that takes care of that. So every time we start a new level, what we're doing is we're traversing the foreground group in reverse order, and we're looking for any object that has the dot remove um, property. If those objects then have a dot timer property, we're going to cancel that timer and we'll set the remove to nil and then we'll remove the object calling the remove self method and then uh, set it to nil. And actually you can see this is from orb smasher. Um, we're going to delete that. Okay. And then we'll call the garbage collection method. After we've gotten rid of all the other, um, old objects, then we're going to initialize the variables using the init vars method that we created earlier in the series. So that's here towards the bottom init vars. Then we're setting the total balloons of the bullets, balloons and the score. And after we initialize the variables, we're restarting the game and we're feeding in those variables that were just initialized. Okay. So it all looks good. And now we need to do one last thing. We need to set the score back equal to zero. So we're going to implement that into the start game um, method. So underscore score equals zero. Okay, so let's find the new method and let's test it out one final time. So we'll play and we need 10 points to win. So let's wait for this green balloon. Let's see if we can hit it. It's five points and there we go, you win. We'll play again. And so now the balloons will spawn again and I can play again. And actually you'll notice there is a small error um, that the score didn't reset upon winning. So let's take care of that. Oh, let's win again. Okay, so when we press this play again, we want the score to actually reset. Okay, so we don't want it to stay on 10. Okay, so what we'll do is um, we need to uh, call update score. That's what we should have called instead of uh, this score equals zero. So let's find that code block. Here we go. And we'll paste that into the start game method update score score and score and remember that underscore score is set here within the init vars okay so let's go back and now we'll relaunch we need 10 points to win oh good got that one and we should win here there we go now the score resets now let's actually um, fire all the bullets. We're out of bullets and you can see that the lose condition is called. That's and we're no longer spawning. And now we'll actually let all of the balloons float up to the top. And there's 10 balloons, so. Okay, so the balloons are done spawning, and now when they've all been accounted for at the top, we will call uh, the win-loss condition uh, because our score is still, they, all, they are all popped, we don't have the right score, and so we lose. And so there you have um, a, seri a tutorial series on how to create this balloon smasher um, game, and the probably the most difficult 
but valuable part of this series is the implementation of a state machine as your central logic hub. And here we were able to implement um, a state machine in the game.lua file that would track custom states of scoring, um, popping balloons, firing balloons, or firing bullets uh, when we've win or, won or lost, and also when we needed to uh, create a new instance of the game. And we were able to connect the state machine to different classes by um, setting the variable of state equal to properties within the classes. And this uh, use of external modules for classes allowed us to have um, better, more modul modularized code so that we could really distinguish um, different blocks of code in different files for different purposes. For a small fee, you can download the project files for this tutorial at cheetomosquito.com.